blessings saints glory be to god uh our topic is about there are more but my take there are 10 things that are not in the bible but 10 things that aren't in our bible glory be to the lamb of god the first one is the rapture there are a bunch of Christians who think that the rapture is taught in the Bible. It is not. That doctrine was not developed until 1813 BC by a guy named John Nelson Norby. Darby. He, he based his entire theological system of a girl vivid dream and read his interpretation into a text the second lgbtq collab passage there are six or seven so-called collabs passage that many christian think condemn the lgbtq community they are incorrect saints i am not with it or i am not against it hallelujah you will never be called unless Jesus called you from sin. Hallelujah. And Jesus has never turned his back on anyone. He blessed the sinner. He is also blessed the righteous. And his words say he is married to the backslider. So he is married to gays. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. So you, no one can't dictate your life but God. So we shouldn't be dictating anyone's life. Hallelujah. Leave all judgment. Judge to God. Let God be the judge of their life. Let God change them from unrighteousness to righteous. Just give them the word. Let it pierce their hearts. There is nothing in the Bible that condemned us any at all. Because the word of God said we all have sinned and come short of his glory. Only Jesus the devil couldn't tempt. Hallelujah. So God did, God do not condemn LGBTQ, whatever it's it name. Hallelujah. There are passages that condemn certain practice that involve correction. But nothing that condemn same gender gender love to read hallelujah a condemnation of the lgbtq community into the bible is to engage in gross and archerism hallelujah remember saints the word of god says he will never leave nor forsake us. And his words also said he's married to the backsliders. And his words say he's, he never condemn us. They are like us. We are all flesh and blood. Sin and come short and fall of God's glory. Hallelujah. Do unto others what you want for yourself. As long as they are not into your space, into your home, into your, if you are not comfortable with it. Hallelujah. But you don't condemn anyone. Glory be to God. Some of, some people has been molested. Why they are like that. Some people grow that way. You don't know what has happened in their life. Why they are like that. So you don't judge because they are like that you give the words as you are not that you are straight it's okay you are like that you are lean it's okay god will call you in due season in in, in his time the third violent jesus many christians love themselves a violent jesus jesus is not violent Jesus is love and compassion. Yes, he went to the church. He released the doves and all the cattle. He turned over the chairs because they were gambling in the house of the Lord. When they should be worshipping. That's the only time you see Jesus get angry. But Jesus is a loving man. 
Many Christians portray Jesus to be bad. One who is going to come back to kick ass and take names. The problem is that, that Jesus never existed. Sure. A Jesus who flipped table and go angry existed, but not one who endures actually violence. To see the violent Jesus in the text is hallelujah. You will not see a violent Jesus. Jesus wants us to come draw nigh unto to God Almighty to have a relationship. Hallelujah. He has the agape love. He can't be a hungry, violent God. But Jesus chases who he loves. He corrects you. When you are going downward. The, 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 the fourth is. Woman can't be pastors. There are passages specifically from Paul that seems to suggest women shouldn't be in leadership role in the church. But like many things, we need to make sure we are reading too much into the text. Sure, Paul condemned some, not all, some women and didn't want them to preach or teach, but not all. All woman, because we have prophetess in the Bible. Hallelujah. And Paul was talking about a pastor who sus, they knows everyone business but God. Instead, they have their eye fixed on the Lord. They bash and boast and envy other females. Hallelujah. Those are the ones who Paul didn't want to preach or teach. Pastors, leaders, males, be watchful, test the spirit. Some of these women shouldn't even be on the altar. Hallelujah. Did God call some of us? Some of us has been called since birth. They call to be prophetess, leaders, teachers. Hallelujah. And I'm not talking about the gifts that, that has been transferred. I'm talking about gifts that God, God has embedded in a female ever since she was in the womb. A prophetess is someone who knows the future before it happened and can be the whistleblower for the future. For example, the storm is coming. You know that a storm is coming to whistle to warn the people so that destruction will not be on your shoulder. If a fire is coming, you know that a fire is coming. If a flood is coming, you know that a... A flood is coming. The ones who fix their eyes on the Lord. You don't have to be only righteous or perfect. None of us is perfect. The ones who have love and compassion for anyone. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Those are the ones should be on the altar. Who we should be preaching. Not boasting and envy and lo lovers of self. Hallelujah. And if you say something, you've been bashed or been thrown out, out of the, the church. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Not for nothing arguable is most important letter romance was read to the congregation by a woman for Ebe. he says so right there in the text the other is going to heaven this nation that we go to heaven we will die is not really a new testament teaching instead what the new testament teaches is that heaven will come down god will come with his glory with his hearts his chariots and all his angels 
the, to the hurt. Further, when the New Testament talk about heaven, it put it in the present tense. Heaven is at the hand. Heaven is in or midst. Heaven is within you and I. And so on. The other. The Bible is inerrant. The Bible never refers to itself as in inerrant. Infallible. Words of God. Why? It can't. There is never a time during the writing of edition of what we know called the Bible. Where the Bible was an angry upon collection there has always been view and counter view. Moreover, when the Bible does mention the words of God, it refers not to itself, but to Christ. The other is, Jesus affirmed everything into the Old Testament. Jesus quote is scriptures a lot. In parables, as the Jewish rabbi, he a master, but has you ever wondered how he quote the text? I'll give you a clue, since it is quite creative, the Christian who says things like Jesus quote from his scriptures, therefore he affirm them all are being quite illogical as well as historical historical the other jesus debt assures the wrath of god understanding of the ottoman is more clavinish than biblical sure there is sacrificial language used to explain the death of Jesus, but to the road, sacrificial language through the length of Calvin, hallelujah, is to do violence to the text. Too many Christian conflict, autonomy theory with the good news. Jesus is a peacemaker, not a war, war man the other don't have sex until marriage <laughs> i'm not saying people should be flip flip on in how they express their sexuality but no here in the bible does it say you have to wait until you're married to have sex too many christians have entered into marriage with with really bad views of sex read purity culture or married to young because too young because of the views that you have to wait until you are married to have sex the other one mary magdalene was a prostitute there is a sinful woman perhaps a prostitute perhaps not in luke 7 whom some in the west have hallelujah mm. Who have erroneously suggested is Mary Magdalene. The problem is that there is no evidence of her of this, nor is there any reason to suggest that because those men who who went to Jesus and wanted to stone that woman. And Jesus bent down and wrote her sins away and told her to go and sin no more. Her sin has been forgiven. Those men who said that that woman were a prostitute, how did they know? Did they, were they the one who did something with her? Hallelujah. This is why when Jesus said, he who her without sin cast the first stone. They could not touch her because they were lying. They were, they just want to bring shame upon this woman. But Jesus, who knows everything, he knows that they were all lies. Hallelujah! Glory be to God. I know there are others, but 
that's enough for now. Glory be to God, saints. And you can read on your own time. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, Jesus. I love you, saints. Shalom.